Yo, what's up? It's so good to see you as always. So literally an hour and a half ago, I was on stage doing a live improv set with this crazy case and some things did not go well. Some things did go pretty well, which was great. And then some things I wish would have been better. So let's kind of talk about that, get a fresh digest of the show. And I'm hoping by the end of this, you'll kind of have a better idea of what to expect and maybe be a bit more prepared when you go to play live for, I don't know, your friends, family here at the house, or who knows, maybe on a stage somewhere. But yeah, this show was super cool. It was put on by III. No, this is not a sponsored video, but I played their little open house party, which was super cool here in Chinatown in Los Angeles. And I had a blast. I took the big crazy case and plopped it up on stage and everything freaking worked. I opened it up expecting things to be everywhere after traveling with it, but hey, it all stayed in place. So let's kind of get in with the two things where I really messed up when I was playing live. And first, which I even said in one of my videos, I messed up on, which is I lost the eight bar. Now I gotta be cognizant of where the one is, right? And if I mess up and I bring something in on say the third bar, it's gonna screw me up later on when I go to do any kind of transitions, right? What I mean by this is I'm playing in four bar and eight bar patterns, right? In the eight bar patterns. And at one point in the track, I forgot where the eight bar was and I brought in samples on the fourth bar, which then like when I changed patterns later on, did this really weird thing where like half of the song came in and half of the other sample was still playing. Of course, you play it off, you take the kick out, you high pass it, send it all to reverb and whip it back and then hit stop on one of the tracks so it stops playing. I don't think too many people noticed. I kind of had a little giggle on stage, which was totally fine. But yeah, again, just try and keep notice of where the four and eight bar count is. And the easiest way to do this is with some sort of an indicator. For example, on the Octa track, I should have been looking at the page LEDs on the bottom right, which are kind of keeping count for me. Another thing, I got a little too excited and a little wild, and I was trying to do this new pattern live, but I realized I needed to do time divisions. On circuit tracks, when you do different time divisions, it waits until the end of the bar to then apply that time division. On the octa track, it actually doesn't. So I was trying to go from a multiplier of one for the sequence down to half of the sequence. So basically saying if something's 120, I want this pattern to play at 60 BPM. On my way down to half, I hit three seconds, I think is what it was. And it was like one step perfectly off. And because of that, when it re-triggered the sample, it was again, perfectly off by one step and it had the sample with this weird crash in it. So it was like, whoa, what just happened? But thankfully on the Octa track, it has a master link setting, which I always have set to 64 steps, which is four bars. So luckily for me, I was able to wait a little bit, take that out by holding down track and hitting stop to just turn that track off for a split second. And when it came back around, it launched that sample again. That was probably the most noticeable, like what the hell was that about kind of thing that happened. But again, I doubt people noticed. Now, those were the two main things that messed me up, right? Losing track of the eight bar and then changing your clock division. If it doesn't reset at the beginning of the pattern, in the middle of your pattern, don't do that. But with those two out of the way, there was also three things that I wish went a little better. First off, I wish I would have prepared my circuit tracks with a bit more synthesizer sounds that I really liked. And not only that, had some sort of a cheat sheet for me to be able to figure out what synth sounds I liked and what type of synth sounds were where on circuit tracks. Because when you hit presets on circuit tracks, it just shows you 32 lit up squares. And those are all your presets. And you have a couple banks of those, but there's no name, there's no screen, there's no color indicator. It's just like a sea of blue or a sea of purple. And you just have to guess, right? And you hold down shift to select it silently. And then I'll be playing it and I'll be like quietly bringing it in. I'll be like, oh, I don't know if this sounds that good. So because I lacked confidence in choosing a proper synth sound, I just stuck with the same synth sounds all night, which again was fine. It was a half hour set, totally easy. But if I had to play like an hour like this, I would have really wished that I had a better way of finding more synthesizer sounds on circuit tracks. An easy fix here, of course, I've done this before, which is go out and play with Novation Peak or a synthesizer that has presets as well as a screen so you know what to expect when you load it up. But of course I was playing with this, you know, rig here, which is pretty 
large, but also there's not a large footprint of me to be able to add a bunch of extra stuff. And I'm dealing with basically like a four foot table is the max space I wanna use up. So of course, bring a synth if you want, but for me, it was a little tricky. And I guess this kind of ties in line with that one, which is file management is so important. The way I was changing up which chords played live, I loaded a bunch of chord samples that I really liked into my static track section of the Octatrack. But the Octatrack only shows up so many characters in that space. And three of those characters at the very end were taking up to show me what scale I was in. So finding a, a clever way to kind of name your samples appropriately so you can again quickly recall them really fast and really easily and confidently, which is the most important part because I'm doing a live improv thing, right? There's not really a, too much of a safety net. I didn't have anywhere to fall. And when you lack confidence, it's harder to have a bit more fun and go crazy. On the tracks where I knew what chords was playing, I would go wild. I tried some halftime drum stuff, some more glitchy things, and it was a great time. But anytime I was getting ready to pull up a new chord progression, I was like, is this the one that I think it is? I'll load it up, hit Q, put it on my headphones and turn it up and be like, oh crap, that's not it. Let me load up another one. Oh, this one works. But by that time, eight bars has already passed of the same repeating sound and there's a chance that people could get bored. But again, I also need to be cognizant of how long I'm letting that pattern play because I might be going, I might be flying through patterns when everyone on the dance floor is like, yo, can you let me groove for a bit? So that's why I try to stick with the whole eight bar thing. An easy way to do that is to set the master length on your Octatrack to 128, 128 steps. That probably would have saved me from jumping from patterns too fast if I just left it on 128. Yeah, file management is super key, especially on something like circuit tracks. Again, it's super fast, super powerful, but if you don't know where your drum sounds are on there or your synth sounds are on there, you're kind of shooting in the dark. So I kind of had some setup where like I had my kicks up here, claps here that I liked, and then that kind of worked the way um, when I would page down through presets, they were all set up the same way. And then the very last page was all percussion. But still, I was like, I don't know what percussion. Is this a cowbell or is this a maraca or is this a dog bark? I don't know what's about to happen. Oh, well, but I guess that's kind of the point of improv. You play against the machine as the machine kind of plays you. Now, lastly, this is just uh, some like, I guess, housekeeping things. There's no booth monitor majority of the time when you play. So come with headphones and be prepared to use your headphones because you're not going to be able to hear what it sounds like out live. And for this show, there was no sound check, which is fine. I don't mind because I'm just running the stereo out of the compressor here, which I tested and checked here at my house before I left and it worked great. But if you want to hear what it sounds like out live, it was really tough. I had no idea if the vocals were loud or not. I put on my headphones, I'd be like, oh crap, the vocals are almost too loud. So between the booming bass and the vocals, it was like hard to get a proper mix when I'm bringing things in by ear without headphones. So come with headphones. And lastly, I guess not lastly, but another thing, come with extra long cables and come with an extra long power cable and your own power strip. You need to be as self-sufficient as possible. I've talked about this forever. I'm so glad I had all the proper cables and even backup cables in case something didn't work properly. But other than that, I mean, everything worked great. The case worked great. I opened it up. Everything was still intact, which was super cool. Uh, plugged it in, ran it into the little mixer. I had control over the volume there and all my presets and projects were ready to go. What was cool was once I was done playing, I could just turn off all the gear and not have to worry about saving. But the next thing I need to make sure of is when I come home, well, I'm, hello, I'm home. I need to open this thing up and reload that same project. So it's back to a blank state. But I mean, yeah, the show was awesome. I, 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 thanks again for having me. It was super cool. The place was super dope. And uh, yeah, I had a great time. It was such a blast. Anyway, hope you found some of this information helpful. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Till then, my friend, you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace.